Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series in which we're playing as Garros de Honduras. So this nation, we're using a special sub-mod for Honduras uh, called Old World Blues Blood in the South and if I remember correctly, I'll try to link it, uh, have it be the first link in the description below, but the government's mandate. <clears throat> Honduras was only hit by a handful of weaker nukes and the government managed to, to survive to gather early days of their nation. The long watch. The first attacks from the south came almost 150 years ago, and we've had to hold them up ever since. The bright light of Honduras. The Great War largely passed by our nation. While bombs fell and destroyed much of North America, our cities mostly escaped the nuclear fire that consumed the world. We're a bright light in the darkness of the Americas, but as societies collapsed around the world and nuclear winter set in, our people were hard-pressed to pull together and survive. The remnants of the government pulled together all of their available resources to survive and protect the people as best they could, but sacrifices had, of course, to be made. Millions died, and the government couldn't keep everything held together. Weapons destroyed the world but could save us. Our industry was necessary to survive. The roads and infrastructure were most important. Now, if you know me, I love roads. And obviously... We have no civvies. Uh, we uh, can really use that civvy. But every own state gets one infrastructure. Uh, are we lacking any supplies? We're lacking a little bit of... Uh, you know, I choose. I never choose something like this. So now... Hey, that's a little better. El Noche de Salvagismo. Nearly a decade ago, we faced our greatest challenge yet. Led by Commandant Luis. He was raised in what was once Puerto Barrios, Guatemala. Luis was an unassuming child. Although he had ambitions to take over the family business, fate had other plans, and he was conscripted at 16. He made a name for himself in the south of Honduras, surviving El Nocho de Savagismos, and saving the city of Danil Danli from the raider horde of the south in the process. In 2273, at the age of 27, Luis was elected by the People's Council to the position of Commandant, a position he, was ho he will hold for life. Now 39, the Commandant has little else on his mind than the eradication of raiders and the prosperity of his nation's people free of their threat. The Long Watch While well, civilization began to rebuild and even prosper in the remains of Honduras, anarchy grew up South America nearly 150 years ago. The first attacks began. Our forces barely stemmed the tide but broke the pillagers and looters. We've been a shield against the darkness ever since, however, the choice had to be made on how to best protect our people and the rest of North America. A large standing army hurts our organization but gives us more recruitable population factor. Uh, surrender limits, infantry attack, and infantry de defense, and the cadre soldiers, more reconnaissance, surrender limits better, better supply grace, special force capacity multiplied 60%, that's uh, kind of like that one. <clears throat> the Day of Reckoning. The Night of Savagery was only the beginning. The peace we fought hard to win is running out, and the war drums in the south are beating once again. Oh, Day of Reckoning. Oh, more daily army XP game, better oh, five weekly manpower, caps expenses, passive caps ex income. El Noche de Savagismos. Less than 10 years ago, our nation faced its greatest test yet, El Noca del Salvagismo, or the Night of Savagery. <clears throat> it was a massive invasion by the largest horde of looters and raiders to ever attack from the south. Our nation burned, and we were only saved by the genius of a young soldier, Nuck Omandant Luis, leader of our nation. Our nation still suffered immensely, but we pushed them back and have settled into an uneasy peace for now. The raiders are gathering in the south again, and the legacy of our victory may be crucial. We only pushed them back at the great cost. Oh god. You get a lot of worse for Clever tactics and brute strength won the day. We turn them against one another. Yo, stability, but I like the war sport. <clears throat> you know, I'll take the uh, manpower hip. And then what? Mass conscription. What about the south? Plowshares and swords. Academy crash course. Uh, while properly training officers is important, time is not a luxury we have. We need to graduates as soon as, as possible. Well, we have eyes of the south. We are continually preoccupied with the constant raider attacks on our southwestern border, leaving us with little time to care about the going on to Mexico, Guardians of North America. So we trade a ride on the border between Central and North America. Honduras was mostly spared from the horrors of the direct nuclear attack that North America faced. As a result, the Honduran government had time, if only a little, to prepare for the coming nuclear winter. 
binding the military, civil service, and emergency services tightly together. Honduras turned into something of a people's militia. They suffered under the harsh years of radiation storms and nuclear snow, but uh, less so than many others did across the globe. This was fortunate indeed, because less than half a century after the Great War, the Hondurans would find themselves under attack from Central America. It appears that other Central and South American nations were not so fortunate in their preparations, and have fallen to radar-driven anarchy, periodically. These groups try and launch mass invasions of on into Honduras, with intent of pushing on to rem remnants of Mexico and America. Honduras has made it their duty to ensure they do not make it. So, what do we have here? The second night is coming, our day of reckoning. We must do what we can to prepare. Reinforce the southern garrisons. By sending more soldiers to our garrisons in the south, we should be able to delay the invasion. <clears throat> Join the southern garrisons. By training and improving the southern garrisons, we can make sure they'll be fair better against the enemy we can even them before. Scout enemy forces. We need to know to better know what we're up against, and scouting will prepare us and better allow us to plan our actions more effectively. Day of reckoning. We need a lot of guns here. Mm, do we have a trade node? No. Oh, do we? Oh, San Pedro, actually we do. Nice. Pre-war bottle cap factory, recently. Our scouts have stumbled upon something magnificent. A massive pre-war bottle cap production facility. Fortunately for us, our currency is based on these little bits of metal. Yippee! We can easily cart these home to spend on on definitely not booze, or we can seal this place up and then blow it off or the face of the earth. Your choice. Come on, Don Luis. We don't have to take a bath in? Oh, good. We got dry cocoa beans. Capsin income goes down for, for a while. Smithereens. Um, how's that going to hurt us? The money we can also use now so we can buy guns. Um, if you wonder about this, please go right ahead. We're going to go with humanitarianism, though. Out of this. Economic growth, excellent. Stimulus would be nice, but. Uh, organizational relations, gun runners. Go buy some more guns. Nice. Let's see, we also have a bloodbath. Too many soldiers are committed to our southern border, allows to train more soldiers. Once the threat is dealt with, divisions can be trained as normal. The might of Honduras. Honduras' army has become a leader and well-trained over the years, and has learned to adapt to harsh environments and unexpected developments. We have 12 army XP. Six, we're getting there. <clears throat> we have a uh, conventional warfare. Conventional sounds like what we would probably choose overall. Lessons from savagery. Strategic studies. I kind of like fortify the south. While the south is covered in bunkers and forts, many of these are in poor condition and could use refits and repairs. And we'll go with plowshares and swords. While the civilian economy is important, we should. What we need at the moment is weapons, not tools. We should focus on developing our arms industry. Also, what are we? Are we civilized? Yeah, we're mostly civilized. No power armor, but that's all right for now. Yeah, we need more PP. Good amount of armies, too, though. We're still in garrisons. Uh, I'm gonna grab this one first. Screw it. Home's Law's good. Nice. Lose a little bit of manpower. So we need more support equipment. Special Forces equipment. Well, we don't even have Special Forces equipment. Yeah, that'll be good to do next. As we have nothing else here. Dang it. I want to spend the arm XP, but I shouldn't. We got five days left for this. Let me command power, so it's good. Nice. Already inspirational. Let's go and make that. That'd be good. Fortify that there south. Hmm. 
I like that one, but guns are better than swords. Major expansions. Oh, you know this place good at too. Um, have allowed us to create and experiment with weapons much more effectively. Yeah. Outside of warfare. Asymmetric warfare. Ancient tactics. Refine, refine is not bad. I like it. We don't have no special forces, so we'll probably go with these two. And you know what? I'm thinking we're gonna go with asymmetrical first. Screw it. We are led by the people. Kind of speak is pretty good too. Daily put power and stability is pretty nice. Pretty unique, different. Not too much. Cost to core entertainment is pretty nice. Stuff. We have a hundred now. Still get two political power day, which is pretty nice, not gonna lie. That is pretty darn decent. God, I hope we just don't lose. Get from above, nice. Hopefully, that other decision will come back again, too. We need more opinion for that one. Good opinion is four. It's good to have more. So that'll be good. Um, well, let's see. I don't think we have anything else yet. Piece of war. Optimize trading. Let's we get more money that way faster. That'd be nice. Uh, so this will make it for lost plowshares. Even with an incoming invasion, we can't wholly neglect our civilian industry. Uh, defense of a firepower. We can send our big guns south of the defenders there. While it might not stop them, it should severely weaken the attackers. Digging in. Our soldiers should learn <clears throat> um, a set of defensive barriers and trenches on the fly. Mass conscription. To survive the second night, we'll have uh, yeah, take every available soldier into our army. Implementing stricter laws around conscription will help. Guns from the ITSA. Inspired by a vigilance against the raiders we faced from the southern borders, Columbus Sebastian II has seen fit to send us a multitude of other most recent weapons. While somewhat condescending gift, all armed are welcome in a struggle against the raiders. This will certainly bring us closer to the Itzo regardless, and that seems to be a good place to be judging by the increasingly expansionist rhetoric emanating from Columbus Sebastian II. We appreciate the gesture. That's yeah, so very pretty nice. Over time, we've gathered thousands of adventurers who come to our nation to trek into the south and often help us fight. Mercenaries will also pay. Fight for pay. Yeah. Refugees. We're not the only ones who suffer from the raiders in the south. Thousands of refugees pour into a country from the south. Properly resettling them might make them willing to fight for us. Even the government invasion, we can't wholly neglect our civilian industry. Lessons from the savages. The night of savagery was a horrific and brutal event, but it was also an excellent learning experience for us officers. Strategic studies. Improving our strategic development can only help us in the long run. You gotta be careful here. We built the Air Force. Our Air Force has gradually deteriorated over the last couple years as we've had to shift more resources to fight on the ground. We should remedy this, our own designs. While salvaging equipment works, it's only unsustainable in the long term. Being able to build our own planes is far more important. So, scavenge equipment. <coughs> There's still pre-war planes located around the country that, while damaged, could be repaired and restored to use. Day of reckoning up. 100 days. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. The second night of savagery, the raiders from the south have arrived to plunder our lands once again, and a horde stretching across the horizon formed to thousands. This is a war that will shape not only the future of our country, but the future of the entirety of North America. We better hope we're ready. These raiders will meet their doom. Honduras will be no more fury, so we're going to play as ourselves, and this is basically Colombia. The honorless. Huh. Oh god, one more attack and breakthrough. Uh, they have the mighty horde. Oof. And they have the bloodbath, of course. But they have the bloody war as well. Crap ton more attack, and they're radical scientists. Tons of manpower. So basically, we're almost in a civil war type deal. Stop training, my god, get your butts over there immediately. Uh, we start losing stuff now. Uh, I'm gonna have to refix that because that's not good for us. And uh, infantry, here, go do that. Come on, move faster. Why are you training? Get there, get there, get there, get there, get there before we get defeated or anything like that. Thank you very much. Hold the friggin' line. 
hope they don't have a navy. I really hope they don't have a navy. That would be really bad for us. Ooh, can we actually just get across if they're not there? That would be kind of nice. That would make it actually super easy for us then, if we could hold the line. So, we got a couple focuses that auto-completed, such as the night of savagery has passed, but the second night, the day of reckoning, has arrived. Hold the line. When we stand on the ground against a barbarian from the south, no inch of land will be bought, will, well, will be bought without blood. Scrunch of guns. And treaties for help. While we can try to stand at the tide alone, we'll struggle. We'll need whatever help we can get so we can issue dispatch messengers to the various Mexican nations to ask for aid. Oh, great. God dang it. Scrounge up the guns. Plenty of guns are held in private hands throughout the country or left behind in various former gang outposts and military encampments. We try to collect as many as we possibly can, of course. Nice, that's good. And we lost it. Alright, you can't even do you can't fight that. So. Well, it looks like we're stuck here for now. There's no way we can fight across, not with how strong they are. Travel scout kits would be good though. We don't necessarily need that. Uh sure guys, yeah. Come on in. Help us out. See what we can do. Yeah, there's no way we can fight against that right now. Oh, we'll increase the political power. Not even two a day. Oh, oh so bad. Fresh blend. Volunteer forces. Who needed manpower? You know? Further aid. Our fight with on honorless. And the war bay and rages on, and there's some concern that our supplies may be running low. We decided to send out aids, a call for aid across Mexico, pleading for supplies and volunteers to help us in our struggle. We do not know what, if any aid shall come, but in a war for the sake of our survival, any assistance will make all the difference. Ask for aid for our Mexican nations. We can expect some manpower and weaponry if they accept. The gardens of the north call for aid, but will anyone respond? The Granjas sends major aid. A military convoy is arriving in our lands, bearing the banner of Las Granjas. Vehicles and Brahmin filled supplies for our troops as well as hundreds of soldiers arrived to aid us in our fight. Such aid will make a massive difference in our efforts to defeat the Honorless and his raiders come. Honduras called on Mexico for assistance and it responded tenfold. The gardens of North America will hold. They all send major aid. Oh, except Costa sends minor aid. Uh, cool. Uh, though it is small, any aid is invaluable in this battle for sur sur survival. Church assistance a little bit too. Okay. Natural disasters. We needed stability, right? Guys, I don't know if that's a smart thing to do. You're already losing. A lot. Already. Oh, free fighters, please. Volunteer forces. Even if the government aren't willing to help, there are people who will gladly fight to defend Mexico from the southern menace. Fresh blend. The barons of Costa Cafinada are rich powerful and could be a significant aid to our efforts. They'd be in a dangerous position if we were to fall, and we should remind them of that. Smart to do. Dynamite. And you take us, please. Oh. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Some Gunnerino, some fresh blah 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 blend. I'm surprised they're not attacking us, though. Guerrilla warfare, huh? Game went purely through conventional warfare. We need to tap our troops, their troops, and supply lines as much as possible. The Green Company. A mercenary company, the Green Company, has come to us offering their services at a discount. They see the threat the horde poses and wants to help. Drum up support. We should make sure that the populace are fully supportive of the war. The hardest choices. Receive word of a potentially tight turning opportunity. A new warlord challenges the honorless. Because I'll be honest, I think we're just going to be sitting here for quite a bit. Victory. We've won through great effort. And force of arms, we have pushed back the vile southern invaders, maybe for good, our country, however. Now it lies in shambles, of course. Whole villages destroyed and some companies wiped out and trade routes left impassable. Exhilarating victory. Remove the bloodbath. Oh, that would be good to get rid of. Yeah, I want to get rid of that as fast as possible. Yeah, I don't think there's very much we can do here. Which honestly kind of really sucks. I do want more stability, though. What about guarding coffee? Honduras was spared direct fire from the Great War, but by no means did it leave them unscathed. Slowly building themselves back up in a world they can no longer rely on or trust, the nation was finally able to stand on its own two feet. That was until the hordes came from the south, leaving the ruined southern continent in their wake. Honduras found itself forced into an endless war with a riot of war bands of various kinds, from cruel slavers and savage cannibals, all seeking to a pill for the northern continent for all its wealth. The nation that survived the nuclear fire would not allow itself to be destroyed by those who did not. 
The Gardens of North America have been fighting for decades, holding the line against a seemingly endless number of southern raiders. On Durst and the line, every man and woman having served on the front at some point in their lives, or in the factories making weapons for the front. Lately, however, the formerly disunited raiders have become organized, led by a person known only as Honorless. And for the first time in centuries, Honduras needs assistance from another nation, so the North lies in the realm of the Baron of Coffee. And although the only thing he respects is a bottle cap, even he must see the threat these raiders possess. The question uh, now remains is if we should request his aid. So that too great to for Honduras alone, we must request aid. Fell these hordes bay for decades, we'll hold on to once again. Yeah, I'll see if we can get anything. They sent aid. The Baron has replied and has agreed to send aid in the form of guns and economic support. Although it's not as much to be hoped for, it will definitely assist us in the war against Honorless and his warband. The Baron has our thanks. The lesser of two evils? The war has dragged on with no end in sight. Both armies have ground each other down, but neither have been able to claim victory. And if we can't win, so we might not have much of a victory, even if we do win. However, a messenger from the South has come to us with a proposal. A prominent member of the Southern Horde Army, a fear-inducing leader in his own right, has become dissatisfied with the leadership capabilities of the Honorless. He sees that the war is not broken and is offered to begin a coup attempt with their support, destabilizing the horror and forcing the honorless to withdraw. However, agreeing to this deal may have consequences in the future. Failing to truly break the horde now will mean that they can retain their strength even after a brutal civil war. There's no guarantee this new warlord won't attack us again. Can you agree to this? Okay, sure, why not? Let him do that, because there's no way we can break across him. I tried a few times here and there, but... It ain't very much. All quiet on the southern front. Living in the south of Mexico, one has become accustomed to living with the ever-present danger of untold horrors emerging from the southern wastelands. Today, however, that terror has lessened. What few tribals that live in the jungle seem to be content, and no great flames or war cries echo over the irradiated mountains. Let's enjoy the peace while we can. It's calm, but where's the storm? Oh, there goes those guys. And anything else that's really happened? Uh, honestly, not too much. I'm hoping to see if we have some, like another civil war pop up or... The divisions get, you know, cast away to help fight something or something else. But for the most part, not really much has happened. We're improving our political power, optimize our trading. Drastic measures doesn't really matter to me too much. Uh, still a little ahead of time there. Uh, still ahead of time, ahead of time, ahead of time, ahead of time, ahead of time. We're using old world blues. Uh, tech expanded. We could probably use some of this. So I guess we might just have to wait see what will happen. But we are going down asymmetric warfare. Um... And we're going to go to the Legion Rock because I personally prefer the Legion Rock because it's much more fun. We grab this and more research speed would be pretty darn good. Alright everyone, so as you can see on screen, we have basically just won the Civil War. This has been extremely annoying and honestly not very fun. You know, it's okay. It's not great. It's really not great. Unless you have the Civil War firing like we did here. It's just, it's just, I can't, uh -huh. it's, not, it's not superb. I'm sorry. It's just like, uh -huh. It's just a grind fest that doesn't just, I don't know, just fighting over the waterways. Not fun. That's why a lot of people don't like fighting in Mexico. Um, so if you want to do this again, please go right ahead for victory. So um, thank God it's over because that just wasn't my thing. That's just, uh, uh, um Should be balanced out, but like fighting over waterways with militia and infantry that you cannot edit, not fun at all. Uh, oh, we have negative effects from our, for our recovery, huh? Well, which probably good. Guess we're building our society. Not only industry and the military were damaged in the war, but our society was shaken. Generations of soldiers sent to war never came back. Refugees fleeing from the war zones and unpopular but necessary measures taken by the government have shaken the people's faith in us. Ah, good. Oh, a research slot. Oh, that's pretty good, too. Uh, rebuilding our economy. Our country has suffered massive blow to its industry and economy. We need to repair economy before our country is properly rebuilt. An exhilarating victory. The war with the horde. <clears throat> it's finally come to an end. The streets are filled uh, with people celebrating the victory, and others mourning the countless dead. Parades in both celebration and memorial have spontaneously been organized by local leaders, and the atmosphere in the country has been that of both hopefulness and sadness. The third of the South has been broken, but what, at what cost? So it begins the recovery process. Oh. Nice. Yeah, that just, I just... I'm sorry, just that wasn't very fun. It really wasn't. Just grinding for nothing in the end. Oh, we green out the country. I like the whole idea of it, just... Mm, it, it kind of soured me a little bit on it. Uh, but let's see. Uh, industrial adaptation. The devastation to our industry is damaging in many ways, but also presents an opportunity. If we begin adapting better techniques, we can begin rebuilding these factories from the ground up using them. Swords into plowshares. We need to retool our factories to better repair the economy. In the factories that we uh, weren't producing weapons were affected by the war with the resources and manpower shortages, so patching these up, uh, or patching up these industries, is quite vital. 
Clear Ao El Astillero. El Astillero del Comandante was particularly badly damaged in the fighting as it acted as a halt the hordes and prompted capital in Honduras. We began clearing out the wreckage and hunting down survivors of the horde to restore the state. Better than ever. By building more factories, we can not only recover from what we lost in the war, but we can improve what, beyond what we ever had. Not bad. Alone as well. Quality products. Be sure that we don't have to reproduce so much. We can make sure what we do produce is of a much higher quality. Better goods last longer. Invigoration, not restoration. Be sure that the economy not only recovers but grows. New techniques will be required to advance our understanding of how industry works and, of course, functions. Not bad. Um, down too. So right now we have the road to recovery. It's hurting us in extreme amounts, but we're trying to get rid of that. Economics impact. Our economy has managed to recover significantly, and the worst is now behind us. We well, still lag behind pre-invasion output, it's only a matter of time. Ease conscription. Now that the war is over, much of our military can begin to calm down. While well, completely disarming would be a mistake, we need farmers and craftsmen that, that the, the army took from their jobs. Political pressures, or reassurances, I should say. Our government is heavily reliant on the support of the people, and we need to make sure that they know we want to support the situation to our advantage. We still hold, wholly committed to defending our people as a first priority. And why, we, why wouldn't we? But the losers to work. A number of raiders and looters from the south surrendered or were captured after the war, rather than retreating in shame. We can often rehabilitate them into society they do better work for us, rewarding their services. By rewarding veterans for their service to Honduras, our people will see our benevolence. Additionally, some of the veterans uh, may be encouraged to stick with the army to offer their valuable knowledge. Representatives. The scale of the war and damage done means that it can be difficult for us to properly understand how communities have been affected. By taking representatives from communities, we can more easily heal them. They don't need fair trials. Many of the prisoners we, re we have refuse to be rehabilitated through work. While fair trials would be nice, there's simply too many, and we really know what the verdict will be. We can simply speed up the process from here on out. And trust in the government. Oh, trust restored. That's not bad. Uh, we have managed to make people more confident again about both us and the future. We're still healing to be dumb, but our nation stands united again. Yeah, so now we can actually send stuff out, so... I understand why the creator of the mod did what he did, but, like... I have to edit divisions. Like, come on. Let's be real. Yep, I guess we got this one edited. So, three... 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 And just go back. That's fine. Uh, anti-tank. Demo teams. That's really where it's at. Tales from afar. Mexico is not the only land of titans and fallen empires. Traders from across the north there are frequent sight in their lands, and they bring with them tales of adventure and heroes in the put Atlani Jaguar Wars to shame. A few of these stories have become local favorites. Where is the water merchants gathered around the fireplace? Which one should we hear today? Chosen one? Great calculator? These stories? Well, let's go with a great calculator. It's only 1% more, but I'll still take it. Here you go. Nice. Nice. Pretty good. So we're at the road recovery, so which means it doesn't look like things have actually gotten any better for us, really. Kind of sucks. But, uh, whatever. Sh sure. Rebuilding our military. Our military was decimated during the war. Heavy casualties, poor supply lines, and mutated beasts all took their toll. We need to rebuild our military to ensure that we can continue standing on our feet and fend off those who would see us gone. No power like the air power. Our air force has the potential to turn the tide in future battles, and a strong air force could help us compensate for a de decimated population base. Lessons learned. Our conflict may have been devastating, but it will also help us better understand how to fight. We can apply those lessons to become more effective combatants in the future. I belong in the ocean blue. We have long neglected our navy, as its usefulness in combating the raiders from the south is questionable now, however. It may prove useful if our, any of our northern neighbors decided to try their luck against us now. Good. Sensing technology. Land auction. I like just doing land auction all the time. As you may know if you're a follower of this channel. The blue sky above. Okay. Um, rebuild supply lines. Our supply lines logistics trains were devastated during the war. We should develop new vehicles and techniques to help recover the new Honduras Navy. Strengthen and develop our new Navy. We should develop new ship designs and be better naval techniques. The Shield of the South. 
We must always seek to improve our military. The rich in the south are unlikely to ever stop, even with the breaking of the horde. And who knows what the nations of Mexico want of us? We must always stand strong, and then we'll finish with the future is bright. For Honduras, the horde has been returned or turned back from their path, and our nation stronger than ever. Now we stand at the crossroads, but however, we move forward, our future is bright. So we're going to end there, probably. And then we've got to do attempt close relations versus menace of the jungle. This focus is only available to the leader that it says either to Juan Claude Guzman or Columbus Sebastian II. Oh, Carlos Franco will never uh, accept us. Valued allies. Army of Honduras. Not the lesser partner. Huh. Menace of the jungle. Fight for freedom. The alliance. Interesting. Arm neutrality. My path is a war path. Oh, well. That actually hurts him quite a bit. That's actually kind of nice. Coffee allies. Huh. Our eyes to ourselves commit to the people. Lose his devotion. Military elite. Military state. Military supremacy. And that's the south. The south bleeds. The southern meat grinder, huh? The God's whip. Back into the light. Oh, that's not bad. Pirates of the Mosquito Coast. The Grand Expedition. The Wonder of the South versus Southern Econ Economics. Okay, interesting. So, regardless, I don't think I'm going to end it there. I've played this enough for right now. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As it looks like we'll probably finish out this campaign in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.